All right, everybody, today we're going to start doing a little bit more work on getting my brackish tank here cleaned up. I've got the red slime cyanobacteria. If you follow along with my videos, you know all too well how much this stuff grows back in this tank. Uh, I am planning on moving the fish out of this tank and into a new tank, so I'm not going to attempt to eradicate the bacteria today. I've tried that in the past. I've really, I've given up trying to do this with this tank that's why we're moving on and we're going to just set up a new tank and transfer everybody and hope I don't accidentally cross contaminate and just bring the problem with me into a new tank but the idea is he's going to be in this tank for a little while longer so to reduce my ever continual maintenance on this tank where I'm constantly getting in there and having to remove that cyanobacteria we're going to go ahead and give it a treatment with a product I believe it's uh, by Ultralife and they make a product for the green slime cyanobacteria and they also make a product for the red slime I have some for the red slime so we may as well use it and I can use this opportunity to uh, explain how to use it properly and so on and so forth uh, one of the key things we're going to be talking about is proper aeration in the tank and an air stone if you notice I've already got the water level slightly lower and you can see how I've got sort of the cascade effect going on on both my filters here um, that's for two reasons. One is the air stone that I'm going to put in here is actually going to cause uh, a lot of bubbles to pop and the salt in the water will actually get all over everything um, and then by the time I'm done this process I'm going to have salt accretion all over my light, I'm going to have it all over the sides of my tank, it's just kind of a pain in the butt. Um, so lowering the water a little bit, I'm going to slide the light bar all the way back against the back and that's going to try to, you know, hopefully prevent some of the bubbles popping that salty water all over everything and it'll keep this process a little bit cleaner. But we're going to put the bar in and we're going to put the stuff in and then we're going to discuss a little bit about how to do it and uh, what's going on with all that. So let's go over to my little workstation and we will mix up the batch of what we need to get put in here and we'll get the process started. All right, everybody, this is not exactly how I wanted to shoot this segment, but I did it with the head cam once, and I had the camera angled wrong, so I've already mixed up the batch, and you missed me actually doing it for real, but it's not that big a deal. Uh, this is the product we're using. It is Ultra Life, and it is a reef product, so as I've suggested before, I think that the salt has something to do with the red slime cyanobacteria. I do not have an issue with this in any of my fresh tanks. It's only in my brackish tank and the product is very clearly set up for reef tanks and saltwater aquariums so the salt I think is an important part of it so I've actually just done a water change and we've made an adjustment to the salinity of the tank and we'll get to that when we get back to it but the way this product works is you take uh, it's very odd wording too it's I believe you take one scoop for every 15 gallons of water and you mix it up with a small amount of tank water and then pour it back into the tank. So I did that, I used one of these scoops level and then I did about another half since I'm dealing with a 20 gallon tank not a 15 gallon tank. Simply mix it into some water. Uh, I did not use tank water, I actually used tap water but I understand the reasoning for suggesting using tap, uh, tank water rather than tap water. Most people have chlorine and things like that in their tap water. I do not so I'm perfectly safe doing that. Otherwise I would say follow the instructions, use a little bit of tank water and you mix your uh, solution up until it's fully dissolved and now we're going to go over and we're going to put it back in the tank. Alright everybody this is a uh not very complicated part we simply pour the jug in and you can see it's really yellow and strange looking That's all there is to actually applying it so we'll let that mix around and the tank will actually clear up here in another 10 minutes or so uh, so we will get one little final discussion about why we need the airstone and why I did the water change all right so I'm not sure exactly how this product kills the bacteria but it does make it very clear in the instructions that the process uses up a lot of oxygen out of the water. So I suspect that it is actually oxidizing the bacteria. 
Bleach and hydrogen peroxide are both powerful oxidizers. That's why they kill so many uh, different organisms. So I'm guessing something like that is going on, but I'm not 100% positive. Any way you slice it, you need maximum oxygenation. You need maximum uh, gas exchange at the surface. And as I've discussed in other videos, while your fish can survive uh, under certain conditions with very calm, still water, if you need to maximize your gas exchange and keep as much oxygen as possible in the water, the best and easiest way to do that, the most efficient way to do that, is with an air stone. So in this case, the larger the better. You really, really need to keep the gas exchange uh, as much as possible when you're doing this process. I've done it in the past where I did not use an air stone. I simply lowered the water level so that I had about a two inch uh, waterfall effect off of my filters and I just thought that amount of water tumbling down in and swirling around would give me enough oxygen and I actually lost a goby, one of my bumblebee gobies. I used to have six of them in there and I lost one. Was it due to lack of oxygen? I can't say for sure, but that would be my guess. That's the only time I've ever used this product without using an airstone, and I lost a fish in the process. So don't take the chance. Get an airstone. It's really inexpensive. It's really easy to just throw a pump on there and it will give you the maximum amount of gas exchange possible. So that's why we've got the airstone going on in there. So why did I do the water change? Well, I got to thinking about what I was saying about the salt and the salt water having something to do with it. And a viewer actually responded to a different video of mine that I've discussed the same problem. Uh, in between the first segment I shot and the second segment I shot, and he suggested something I had already been pondering, and I just decided that was the censure. I was going to go ahead and try it. And he suggested lowering the salinity while I was doing the treatment. And the reason he suggested that was simply because if it seems to be that the higher levels of salinity is what favors the growth of this bacteria, lowering a level of salinity should therefore make it more difficult for it to live, and then the one-two punch of that with the treatment should take care of it. So I did actually lower the water uh, or lower the salinity to about 1.002. So we're not even in what is considered brackish water at this point. Uh, it does have a little bit of salinity to it, but not very much. I did a full five gallon, a 25% water change, and I put uh, fresh water back in, and I was already at the very low end of brackish to begin with. So the other reason that that may be helpful is simply the osmotic shock. The single-celled organisms of the bacteria will undergo a lot of different osmotic pressure when the specific gravity changes suddenly like that. It's sort of the same reason you would give um, a fish a salt bath or if you'd give a marine fish a freshwater bath for 15 minutes to kill off any parasites. It's the osmotic pressure differential that either ruptures the cells of the, the single-celled organisms or it dehydrates the cells in the single-celled organisms depending on whether you're giving it a fresh or a salt bath. Um, so I'm hoping that lowered salinity on a fairly sudden uh, way like that might have an impact in and of itself on the cyanobacteria and then again with the one-two punch I will hopefully be able to knock it out of the tank pretty well. I really don't expect it to be completely fully eradicated especially after just one treatment and if I really planned on continuing with this tank I would get in there and pull all the rocks out. I'd treat all the rocks overnight with bleach. I would pull one filter off at a time and completely scrub out and clean the filters. I'd wipe all the glass down down. I would get this tank as clean as I possibly could physically before adding the treatment and killing off any of the microscopic stuff that was left behind in the substrate or into places I couldn't get to or couldn't see. So in this case I'm just trying to beat it back long enough that I don't have to keep messing with it over the next month or so. I'm really hoping by uh, around the holidays I'll be able to get this tank moved over. I've got some plans for this end of the room and that's really what I'm waiting on. It's you know I could move these fish now if I wanted. I'm just not in any hurry and as I said if I've got this tank sitting here and ready to go there's stuff I can do with it. I can use it to uh, you know illustrate different examples of how different things have different effects and I can show you how to use this treatment etc etc may as well make what use out of this tank I can while I've got it 
So that's all I've got to say really about all of this. We will come back in a couple days and we will see what's going on with the tank. So make sure you subscribe. You don't want to miss to see what the outcome looks like. And maybe we'll even do a couple of little update videos in the meantime uh, and check progress throughout the uh, course of the two-day period we're supposed to be doing this. So thanks for watching this one. Again, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the uh, conclusion of how this turns out. And I will see you real soon on the next one.